Hi. Uh, let us solve some more questions regarding the chapter radiation. Okay. Uh, two very large parallel plates are maintained at uniform temperatures of uh, this is T1. Oh, I forgot to change the pen size again. So this is T1, T1, 900 Kelvin and T2 is equal to 650 Kelvin. Their emissivity is epsilon 1, 0 0.5 and uh, the second has emissivity of 0 0.8 respectively. A thin aluminium shield is placed between them as shown in figure. Okay, aluminium shield has an emissivity of 0 0.15 on both the sides, on both the sides. Okay, what will be the ratio of net rate of radiation heat transfer? between the two plates per unit surface area per unit surface area of the plates without shield to that of the with oh sorry to that of with the shield so you have to find q without shield to with shield okay so in the previous video i've told you that i've studied just one formula and i can derive all the formulas of uh, other special cases okay this is a special case again when uh, the radiative heat transfer is occurring between two parallel plates okay so most of you guys i mean uh, it's good to remember uh, the special this special case formula is good to remember and i will you know show it what is the formula uh, so the expression that uh, i told you yesterday was that uh, Q net between the two bodies uh, is equal to this is sigma T1 raised to the power 4 minus T2 raised to the power 4 upon 1 minus epsilon 1 A1 epsilon 1 plus 1 by A1 F12 plus 1 by uh, sorry 1 minus epsilon 2 A2 epsilon 2. You know what is this now? This is uh, surface resistance. This, this is also surface resistance, and this is space resistance. And basically, it comes from uh, the network analysis only. Okay, like uh, when you uh, draw the network. Suppose these are two parallel plates. Okay, there will be surface resistance here. Okay, then there will be space resistance. That is one upon a one f two. And then there will be again surface resistance of that plate. Okay, so basically it is uh, Q net is uh, basically sigma T1 raised to power 4 minus T2 raised to power 4. That is uh, E1, EB1, EB1 emissive power of black body, uh, EB2 emissive power of black body 2 divided by the total resistance occurred. I mean the total resistance offered to the path of radiative heat transfer a better word okay so uh, this is basically eb1 minus eb2 upon uh, resistance offered which uh, comprises of space resistance plus that uh, surface resistance okay this is how you get q net in this case i think i've explained this uh, this portion in the previous video this one i am explaining in this video okay so this is how you get this this formula huh? that is the net radiative heat exchange between the two bodies okay now in case of these uh, parallel plates these are considered to be very large parallel plates okay so in these uh, in this special case what we do is we find the net radiative heat transfer occurring between the two parallel plates per unit surface area okay so what you do is i'm going to uh, rub this uh, let's not rub this because if i rub this i guess the figure will also be so i'm telling you that for uh, yeah for net radiative heat transfer per unit area what you do is you take this a common okay a1 is equal to a2 is equal to a because these are considered to be very large plates okay infinitely large plates so a1 is equal to a2 you take out this a a a common this goes above here in numerator 
and then from numerator take this below q net okay so that will give you watt per meter square only okay so let us uh, write this q net by a that is a uh, watt per meter square okay is equal to sigma t1 raised to power 4 minus t2 raised to power 4 upon uh, 1 minus epsilon 1 epsilon 1 plus uh, 1 by f12 and uh, plus uh, this 1 minus epsilon 2 upon epsilon 2 okay okay now can you tell me uh, the value of f12 uh, I've uh, explained that uh, summation rule and reciprocity theorem in the previous video. So if these are parallel plates, okay, this surface is 1, this is 2, this is radiating heat. Can I say that F12 is 1? Because F11 will be 0, it's a flat, flat surface. So F11 by summation rule plus F12 is equal to 1. This is 0, that is no part of radiation which is going outside will be falling back to 1 this is not possible okay so f12 is 1 so this becomes 1 okay now further when i solve this portion this portion okay i'm writing this portion only so this will be 1 by epsilon 1 minus uh, epsilon 1 by epsilon 1 is 1 plus 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1 so this gets cancelled out and uh, for uh, the net radiative heat transfer between in the two parallel plates the expression becomes q net by a that is a watt per meter square that is sigma t1 raised to the power 4 minus t2 raised to the power 4 upon 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1 okay this formula you must have learned or uh, if you haven't learned uh, you can uh, you know remember this expression because uh, many questions directly come on this expression in the exam okay so this is the expression we'll be using to solve this question so can i say that this expression is for the case when there is no aluminium shield simple so when uh, emissivities are given the question uh, yeah, temperatures of both the plates are given and emissivities of uh, both the shields are also given. Uh, sorry, plates are also given and uh, the emissivity of shield is also given. Everything is given to you. So, uh, so this is for uh, uh, the net rate heat transfer per uh, net radiative heat transfer per unit area. Per unit area. For what case? Without shield. Okay, uh, this becomes sigma T1 raised to the power 4 minus T2 raised to the power 4 upon 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1. Okay. Put the values. The values are T1 is 900 Kelvin, temperature is given in Kelvin and uh, T2 is 650 Kelvin, epsilon 1 is 0 0.5, epsilon 2 is 0 0.8. Everything is given to you. Q net by A will be 185, uh, no. One two zero three five. Sorry, one two zero three five watt per meter square. Okay. So this is the net rate of uh, radiative heat transfer when there is no shield present. Now what I do is I introduce a shield between the two plates. The net radiative heat transfer obviously will decrease. Why? Because the emissivity of the shield is just zero point one five. Okay. So uh, for that, the expression will be Q net by A with the shield, okay? So with the shield, it's equal to sigma T1 raised to power 4 minus T2 raised to the power 4, okay? You apply that resistance method and uh, write the surface res resistances and space resistances, okay? And uh, eventually when you'll solve it, I'm, I think you must have derived it in your theory class. So it's uh, 1 by epsilon 1 plus this case, okay? Let me draw the figure for some better clarity. So this is a plate, this is a plate, and this is a shield, okay? Or let me draw the shield with some different words. This is a shield, okay? This is having emissivity epsilon 1, this is having a epsilon s, and this is epsilon 2, 
okay so how you write the expression for net radiative heat transfer with the shield it is written as 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon s minus 1 for these two plates okay plus 1 by epsilon 2 or uh, sorry 1 say 1 by epsilon s plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1 okay for these two plates so this one is for these two plates this one is for these two plates okay yeah. this was the uh, method to you know learn the learn this expression okay so when you put all the values uh, this value will come out to be 1857 1857 watt per meter square okay yeah. also uh, what is this uh, this portion 1 upon 1 upon 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1 what is this portion can i say that this is uh, equivalent emissivity for this system okay. this is equivalent emissivity for this system let me just put all the values this is the answer what have been asked uh, it, it's asked that the ratio of radiation heat transfer for the two places take the ratio with the answer it will be 6.48 ratio is 6.48 is it a multiple choice question or uh, it's not a multiple choice question? Is it at 6.48? This is how you take on the question for uh, parallel uh, for the net radiative heat transfer between the two parallel plates. Okay, we'll solve one more question in which uh, there will be number of parallel plates. Uh, the expression for that question is uh, somewhat different, but you get that expression by using this basic network analysis only okay but it's better to remember the expression for this case okay so uh so the next question is uh from shape factor a hemispherical cavity of radius 0 0.75 meter is covered with a plate having a hole of 0 0.25 meter diameter drilled at its center okay so hemispherical cavity okay and uh, it is covered by a plate plate which is having a hole of 0 0.25 meter at its center okay and uh, the inner surface of the plate uh, let me denote this first this is uh, 0 0.75 meters that is the radius of hemispherical cavity and this hole is 0 0.25 in uh, 0. 25 meters of 0 0.25 meters the inner surface of the plate is maintained at 550 kelvin by a heater embedded in the surface assuming the surfaces to be black and the hemisphere to be well insulated find the value of f23 okay the question uh, uh, the figure in the question was missing so uh, this is uh, surface 2 this is surface 1 and uh, this is 3 the hole this is 3 let me check yes 1 2 3 so you have to find the value of F23 that is the part of radiation the fraction of radiation going from surface 2 to 3 okay so whenever these type of questions come what you have to do you have to apply the reciprocity theorem and summation okay then start so uh, let's apply it for surface 2 first okay for surface 2 so that means it is F21 plus F22 plus F23 is equal to 1 okay so can I say something about F21, whether it is 1 or 0? No. Some part of it will be going on surface 1. Some part of radiation from surface 2 will be going on 3. And some will be coming back to some will be coming back to 2 also. Okay. This will be going here, the radiation will be going here also, and some may be coming back to its own surface. So I cannot uh, say anything about this. So apply the summation rule on uh, surface 1 then. So that is F11 plus F12 plus F13 is equal to 1. Okay. 
So can I say something about F11? Yes, it will be zero. Why? Because it is a flat surface. This this portion and this portion is one. Okay. So F11 is what? It is zero. Great. F12 will be having some value. Okay. What about F13? F13 will also be zero because no part of radiation can go this way. It's not possible. So F13 is also zero. So that leaves me with F12 is equal to one. Okay, so all the radiative heat transfer that is, uh, that is, uh, you know, occurring on one will be going towards two only. So F12 is equal to one. Okay, this is one point. Now, I haven't applied the uh, summation rule on surface three. Let's do it for surface three. This is F31 uh, plus F32 uh, plus F33 is equal to one. Okay. What about F33? It's a flat surface again. It's just a hole, okay? So this is zero. What about F31? F31. Can 3 see 1? No. 3 cannot see 1. So F31 is also zero. This is a short trick. You know, you sit on 3 and try to look at 1. No part of radiation from 3 will be going on towards 1. So F31 is also zero. That leaves me with F32 is equal to 1. Great. Now I have F32. I have to find F23. What I can do? I can apply the reciprocity theorem. That is A2 F23 is equal to A3 F32. Nice. So A2 F23 is equal to A3 F32. F32 is 1. And uh, what about F23? That I have to find. And uh, what is A2 and A3? That I can know because the radius and diameter of radius of the hemispherical cavity and diameter of the hole is given. Okay. So A2 is uh, the curved surface area of hemisphere that is 2 pi r square and r is what 0 0.75 okay square f23 and uh, A3 will be pi by 4 d square d square is what d square is uh, 0 0.25 square uh, the diameter of hole is 0 0.25 square and F32 is 1. F32 is 1. Okay. So solve this. Uh, you'll be getting the answer as uh, F23 will be. Let me check it. What is the answer? So the answer will be 0 0.013. 0 0.0139. Okay. This is the answer. Question looked so complicated, but the question is so simple. In the question paper, also in the actual exam, uh, the gate paper setter sometimes uh, try to play with your mind that he or she will be setting a very long question. I mean, uh, that will seem a very long question, but in actual, it will be a very easy question. So, let's move on to the next one. Uh, the next one is the net radiation from the surfaces of two parallel plates of emissivity 0 0.7. Uh, the parallel plates emissivity is 0 0.7. Yeah. Between two temperatures T1 and T2 is to be reduced by 85 times. It has to be reduced by 85 times by using radiation shields of emissivity 0 0.05 in between plates. The number of shields required is, okay. So, let there be n shields between these two plates, n shields, okay. So, without shield, without any shield, we know the expression, that is uh, the net rate of heat transfer without any shield between the two parallel plates per unit area is equal to sigma t1 raised to the power 4 minus t2 raised to the power 4 upon 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1. This we know, right? So this is the expression for uh, the uh, radiative heat transfer rate between the two parallel plates without shield, okay? Uh, the expression for 
n number of shields between the two parallel plates is sigma t1 raised to the power 4 minus t2 raised to the power 4 upon 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 plus 2n epsilon s minus n plus 1. Okay, learn this if there are n number of shields. Okay, learn this expression and write this expression first. Okay, so if you have uh, uh, written this expression, this is an important one. I have uh, told you in the uh, while solving this type of uh, question that this can also be derived from that network analysis. Okay, so this is an important expression. Do write this one if you have not written it yet. I have given you the time. You can obviously pause the video and write this expression. So, uh, yeah, so it has to be reduced by 85 times. So, can I say that uh, Q with shields is equal to 1 by 85 of Q without shields? So, that is Q with the shield is equal to 1 by 85 times Q without shield. Obviously, without shield. Net heat transfer rate, radiative heat transfer rate will be more. This is uh, 1 by 85 of Q without shield. Okay. Now, uh, I have been given with emissivities. Okay. When you when you will be dividing this or when you will be putting this in expression, let me okay. Let me put this also. Sigma T1 raised to power 4 minus T2 raised to the power 4 upon uh, this is with shield. So 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 plus uh, 2n epsilon s minus n plus 1 is equal to 1 by 85 and this is uh, sigma t1 raised to the power 4 minus t2 raised to the power 4 upon 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1. Okay, so yeah, this gets cancelled out. Okay, we are left with the emissivities and n. Put the values, uh, solve this. Okay. And, uh, get the answer. Emissivity epsilon 1 is equal to epsilon 2 which is equal to 0 0.7 and epsilon s is 0 0.05 this is epsilon s this is epsilon 1 is equal to epsilon 2. What is left in this question? Nothing. N will be it will be 3 point something or whatever this is and will be 4. If n is in decimals like it is in 3 point uh, like, it, like it is 3.8 obviously uh, you will take 4 shields okay. So n is equal to 4. Will be the answer. Let me check this. N is equal to 4 is the answer. Yeah. N is equal to 4. Yeah. This is the answer. Okay. The next is an enclosed body consists of three surfaces 1 to 3. F11, F12, area 1, area 3, F33 three, three is given. Okay. The value of F32 is. I have to find F32. Apply the reciprocity theorem. That is uh, A2, F23 is equal to. Uh, A3, F3. I have not been given with A2. Okay. So, this is of no use to me. Okay. Then apply the reciprocity theorem between surface uh, uh, 1 and 3. No use. So, this is uh, A1, F13 is equal to uh, A3, F31. Okay. I am given with area 1, area 3. Great. I have also been given with the F. No. So, this I have to find. I have to find what F13 and uh, F31. But how can I move on to F32? I can do that also. Why? Uh, I mean, how? F31 plus F32, that is by summation rule, plus F33 is equal to 1. Okay. You have to find F32. I have to find F32. Okay. F31 is given to me. F31 is also not given to me. Wow. F33. F33 is given to me. Plus 0 0.2 is equal to 1. This is F32 plus F31. Okay. F31. Uh, if I find out F31, I can find out F32. Okay. So, that means I have to move back to this one. Okay. I have been given with A1, A3. And uh, if I get F13, I'll get F31. And if I get F31, I'll get F32. Okay. So, now I have to think a way of getting F13. So, apply uh, uh, this uh, submission rule on surface 1. Why? See, F11 is given, F12 is given. You will get F13. 
So F11 plus F12 plus F13 is equal to 1. Uh, this is 0 0.2 plus uh, 0 0.2. It's 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. Okay. So this is, uh, I guess this was 0 0.5. F13 should be 0 0.5. Let me uh, check the data first. I, uh, yeah, the data is correct. Okay. So this F13 is coming to be again same. That is uh, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2, 1 minus 0 0.4, that is F13 is 0 0.6. I think I got confused with some other questions data. The data is correct. So F13 is 0 0.6. Okay. Now I've got F13. I have A1. I have A3. I can get F31. And uh, 31 will be what? Uh, F13 is 0 0.6. A1 is 1. A3 is uh, 2. So 1 into 0 0.6. Oh, this is 0 0.3. So this is 2 and F31. This comes out to be 0 0.3. F31 is 0 0.3. Nice. Now F31 is 0 0.3 and uh, this is 0 0.2, so 0 0.5. Okay. So this was 0 0.5. So F32, the final answer is 0 0.5. So F32 is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Okay. This was the answer that uh, I was recalling. So F32 is 0 0.5. Is it a multiple choice? Yes, it is a multiple choice question. 0 0.5. Let's move on to the next question. A small hot surface at temperature 425 Kelvin having an emissivity of 0 0.85 dissipates heat by radiation into a surrounding area at 400 Kelvin. The equivalent radiation heat transfer coefficient is. Okay, uh, this is a new type of question. The equivalent radiation heat transfer coefficient. Check the units. Watt per meter square Kelvin. Okay. So, uh, Q by radiation, you have studied. Sigma epsilon a t raised to the power 4. Sorry, t1 raised to the power 4 minus t2 raised to the power 4. Okay. This you have studied. Okay. And this is also equal to hr a t1 minus t2. Okay. Where hr is what? hr is the equivalent radiation heat transfer coefficient in watt per meter square Kelvin. Okay. This you have to find. So when you open this term, when you open this term, this is what? This is uh, T1 square plus uh, T2 square and uh, T1 square minus T2 square. Okay. Further open this term, you will get T1 square plus T2 square and uh, this will be T1 minus T2 and T1 plus T2. Now equate it with the, the terms, the expression on... Uh, right hand side okay this will be sigma epsilon a okay and uh, this is the uh, hr a t1 minus t2 what do you get what do you get you get that radiative heat transfer coefficient is equal to is equal to a and t1 minus t2 gets cancelled out so this is equal to this term, this term, that is sigma epsilon t1 square plus t2 square and t1 plus t2. Let me uh, write, so this is uh, sigma epsilon t1 square plus t2 square, okay, and uh, t1 plus t2, t1 plus t2, this is hr. Now you have uh, t1, t2. Yes, T1 and T2, and you have emissivity and sigma that you know that 5.67 into 10 to the minus 8. It's value. Put the uh, data and uh, get HR. HR will be 13.54. 13.54 watt per meter square Kelvin. Okay. This is how you find the radiative heat transfer coefficient, okay? By comparing it with a basic equation. That is the net radiation heat exchange between one two. Okay, next is a uh, cubical oven has inside sides equal to 0 0.4 meter. One of the faces of the oven forms the door, okay? 
If the five other inside faces are black and maintained at 600 degrees Celsius, find the rate of heat losses if the oven door is kept open. So Q, okay. And uh, if five other inside faces are black, okay, nice. That is emissivity of the faces can be taken as one. So this is the oven, okay, this is the oven. And uh, suppose this side forms the door, this side. This side forms the door, okay. So whatever will be the heat generated inside the oven, when this door is left open, it will go here. Okay. So can I say, let this surface be 2. Let this surface be 2. This door surface be 2. Okay. And the other 5 surfaces, let that, let them be 1. Denoted by 1. Okay. So this is uh, 1. The other 5 surfaces, okay. Other 5 surfaces are denoted by 1. And the door I have denoted by 2. Okay. So, uh, it's uh, asking us to find the rate of heat losses if the oven door is kept open. So, can I uh, say that the uh, rate of heat loss by radiation will be equal to uh, this uh, sigma T1 raised to the power 4 upon, upon what? Upon total resistance offered to the path of radiation again the simple uh, network analysis resistance offered resistance offered this is what this is emissive power of a black body so emissive power of a black body upon the resistance offered to the path of radiation will be heat loss okay resistance yeah uh, so what will be the resistance offered to the path of radiation it will be the summation of surface resistance plus space resistance okay write it down sigma t1 raised to the power 4 upon 1 minus epsilon 1 a1 epsilon 1 plus 1 by a1 f1 this will be 0 why because all the five surfaces of this oven are black, so epsilon 1 will be 1, this becomes 0. So that implies uh, Q loss will be sigma T1 raised to power 4, take this A1 F1 to above, A1 F1. See, this will be the expression, okay. Now, uh, what will be A1? A1 will be 5 a square okay because I have denoted all the five surfaces all the inside five surfaces as one so the surface area of one surface is a square it's a cube and uh, for five surfaces it is 5 a square so this is 5 a square and uh, t1 is given to me t1 is given to me 600 degrees Celsius that is 873 Kelvin so this is 873 Kelvin Sigma you know all you have to do is you have to find F12. How can you find F12? Whenever you have to find F12 or uh, whenever, we, whenever you, you have to find shear factor, apply reciprocity theorem and summation rule again. So A1 F, uh, sorry, this is uh, A1 F12 is equal to A2 F21. Okay. Okay. And uh, F11 plus uh, F12 is equal to 1. Okay. Yeah. So A1 F12 is equal to A2 F21. What is A1? A1 is 5A square. 5A square. Okay. What is A2? A2 is uh, one side of the cube. That is A square. So this is A square. What about F12 and F21? F12, I have to find. What about F21? Can you say something about F21? That is the... Yes, you can say about F21. Because this is a single surface. And what? This is a plane surface. So whenever you uh, apply the summation rule on uh, 
surface two that is F two one plus F two two is equal to one. Okay, F two two will be zero. So F two one will be one. This is a single plane surface. So all the radiation will be going towards one only. Okay. So uh, this is F two one is equal to one. This is one, and uh, this gives me F one two is equal to one by five. That is zero point two. Okay. So F one two is zero point two. Now, now you have all the data. Solve this. Uh, you will get Q loss is equal to. Mm, this will be. This will be equal to five two six nine point three eight six. Five two six nine point three eight six volt. Okay. Uh, is it a multiple choice question? Yes. Five two six nine. So that means approximately option A. Five two six nine. Yeah. Okay. This is the last question for uh, uh, chapter radiation, and this is also a different type of question. So uh, let's solve this one. So this question is. Uh, The spectral emissivity function of an opaque surface at thousand Kelvin is approximated as okay. The spectral emissivity function of an opaque surface at thousand Kelvin is approximated as okay. It is. It says that the emissivity of this surface is varying with its with the wavelength. Okay, so when the wavelength is between zero to two micrometer, its emissivity is zero point four. And subsequent uh, data is given, and corresponding black body radiation functions are also given. That is, uh, f of zero is equal to zero, and uh, function of lambda one is equal to zero point zero six six two eight. Similarly, function lambda two is given and infinity is given. That is one. What will be the rate of radiation emission from the surface in kilowatt per meter square? This is a different type of question. So the rate of radiation radiation emission from the surface will be same only. That is uh, sigma epsilon uh, a t raised per four. This is in watt. Take this a here. This will be in kilowatt. That is a by a. Sorry, this will be in watt per meter square now. But I have to find this in kilowatt per meter square. Okay. So e by a is equal to sigma epsilon t raised per four. The only difference here is that epsilon will be epsilon average now. Why? Because epsilon is changing. Okay, it is not uh, same. It is not constant. So it is changing with wavelength. And how do you find average epsilon? There is a formula for this, which is equal to that epsilon one. Function zero, uh, sorry. Uh, function of lambda one minus f of zero plus epsilon two f of lambda two minus f of lambda one plus epsilon three f of infinity minus f of Lambda. Two. Okay, this is lambda one. This is lambda two. Okay, and the subsequent uh, black body radiation function values are given to you. So this is the expression that you have to learn, and this is how you find uh, average emissivity in this case. Okay, so you will be given with the values, and uh, you can see that you have been given with the values. So if this type of question ever comes in the examination, be prepared for it. This is the expression for that for uh, finding uh, the average emissivity. Okay. Now put the value f lambda one is this minus zero. Okay. Plus epsilon two. Epsilon two is zero point seven. Epsilon one is zero point four. Epsilon two is what? Ah, zero point seven. This is f lambda two. This is the value minus this value. Okay. Plus epsilon three. That is zero point three. Uh, into f infinity is uh, one minus f of lambda two, zero point seven three seven eight one. And if uh, epsilon four was given some value, so it would have been plus epsilon four uh, f of uh, infinity minus f of lambda three. 
like that okay so when you put all the values you will be getting uh, the average emissivity is equal to 0.57 0.57 okay and when you put this average emissivity in uh, the in finding this uh, emissive power okay emissive power per unit uh, area uh, this will be in watt per meter square but you have to give the answer in kilowatt per meter square this is uh, what this was sigma epsilon average english per second uh, you have been given with the temperature that is 1000 kelvin sigma do you, you know that sigma which is a 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 into epsilon average which is which is 0 0.575 t raised to the power 4 uh, t raised to the power 4 is 1000 okay to so solve this e will be this will be uh, i'm directly writing the answer in uh, kilowatt per meter square However, up to this it is in watt per meter square. Okay, this is a thirty-two point six kilowatt per meter square. Okay, this was a different type of question, which may come, which may come. So you have to pre be prepared for it and learn that expression. Okay. So I think we have covered almost uh, every type of question. I have also explained how the formulas that you have learned actually you actually are derived from the network analysis okay i've also told you that okay so uh, this was all from radiation and uh, uh, this is an important uh, topic from uh, the exam point of view okay and we have covered questions from shape factor we have covered uh, the questions from uh, basic radiative heat transfer i've explained you the network analysis also and how you get those formulas and uh, this is all for radiation. So, thanks.